Hey, what is going on, all my fellow godlies and Warframe enthusiasts around the world? This is Vance from the ever popular series Warframe God Builds. And the last time we took a look at Anaros was in the Warframe God Builds series, and quite a bit has changed. Pretty much all of his weapons, some of his build, and the tactics that we use for him. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to cover everything that I've changed and update you on this build so you have really good idea how to play in Aros and what you're going to be using to provoke in-game content. So the major difference here is uh, the Exilus mod. I swapped this out, I formed this spot because uh, it was thematically not right in my head. I think I used like Toxic Flight or something like that to begin with and this is not important this is pretty much the only thing in this setup that's not important at all it was just something that I didn't like aesthetically so I changed it so I could I could have fire instead of toxic although I will say that during the Halloween event which is probably coming up again if you guys remember correctly when you're disarmed and you have nothing but your fists this will kill infested fun fact about that when you do your bullet jump, it will kill infested if you're close enough to them. Now I'm using Empowered Blades because Anaros doesn't suffer the negative effects from Empowered Blades. Anaros doesn't have shields, therefore it's not going to drain 90 shields per hit. It's just going to give him the benefit without any drawbacks, which is magical because we're also using Xenostar, which I'll cover later on. I'm using Prime Vigor, Prime Continuity, Rush, Armored Agility, Rage, Negation Swarm, Steel Fiber, and Vitality. Rage is an absolute must because since Anaros has no shields, you're constantly going to be taking health damage, which therefore means that you're going to be benefiting from this positively all the time. You're going to be getting energy back. Uh, Armored Agility and Rush are here. Uh, pretty, pretty much as a preference, I'm not going to say that it's necessarily needed, but I will say that Anaros is slow, and I don't like that. I like to get around very quickly, so that's why this is here. You could swap this out for something else if you found it unnecessary, but Armored Agility does give you that extra bit of armor, which is why still fibers here. Uh, vitality, obvious reasons. You definitely want to build uh, for Vitality and Steel Fiber, that way you can get your armor up to 510 and your health up to 5830. That's going to positively benefit your companion should you choose to use a Kubro or a Kabat or an Infested Helmet Charger. Negation Swarm is an absolute must because it's, it's too good. This, this mod is too good. Scarab Swarm Augment. Scarab Armor protects Anaros from status effects, consuming 3% bonus armor for each effect resisted. This is pretty much an immunity to status effects. No slash procs, no corrosive, no radiation. This will drain from your, your Scarab Swarm to prevent those damages from going through beautiful so magical that it just needs to be in this setup whatever you were using before whatever we had what type whatever type of mod setup you you're gonna need this trust me trust me on this one if you want to be a tanky in ROs this is gonna help you do that so I mentioned before how we were using Xenostar now um, if you didn't already know you can click the appearance tab here and on B I have <laughs> the Heavy Blade Dominion skin. This can be purchased from the Chroma Dynasty bundle. Uh, this is the only weapon in Warframe that allows you to use a different skin and you get a giant sword. So if you didn't know about that, now you know. Uh, but I'm, I'm not using it. 
I don't find it to be all that interesting. Instead, I'm just gonna go into the mod setup here and show you what I'm using. I'm using Cleaving Whirlwind, Feral and Scourge, Voltic Strike, Condition Overload, Prime Pressure Point, Prime Reach, Organ Shatter, Drifting Contact, and Volcanic Edge. Now, before all of this was conceived, there was this nifty little tactic you could use with Anaros. You could use his Desiccation, his first ability to blind the enemies, and if you had gas damage, you could completely melt their armor. But thanks to a certain sissy on the forums, uh, I've completely, completely shunned the light on this guy uh, multiple times. I've talked about this guy being uh, a complete retard and ruining the game for us. But thanks to that guy who brought it up to DE's attention, that tactic was nerfed. Therefore, we have to go back to Heat and Corrosive, making the game so much more dull and not having variety. Well, regardless, uh, Condition Overload and Drifting Contact are the different mods that weren't available back then that are available now. So increasing your combo duration by 10 seconds for 40% extra status chance, bringing us to up to an 80% status chance. Xenostar is going to be really, really good at removing armor, rendering them much more vulnerable if they're heavily armored targets, and let's face it, there's really not anything else that's challenging in the game besides armored units, heavily armored units. Uh, Corpus will go down to this, Infested will go down to this. Everyone's going to get completely destroyed by this. Uh, especially with the condition overload, you know, get you get 60% melee damage for each status that affects the enemy target. So, ultimately, you can blind them, you can hit them with the corrosive and the heat, and then on top of whatever else you're using, I'm choosing Ballistica Prime. Again, it's completely thematic. You could choose to use a different secondary, but there is a strategy that I like to use with this. I'm going to cover when I talk about the Ferox. I'm using Prime Target Cracker. Barrel Diffusion, Prime Pistol, Gambit, Hornet Strike, Stunning Speed, Convulsion, Lethal Torrent, and Pathogen Rounds. The idea with this is to make it do as much damage as possible. That way, when I finally hit enemy with the killing blow for this, it turns them into a ghost. Therefore, making them fight for me for a limited amount of time. And when I say limited, I'm not just whistling Dixie. I really think that Digital Extreme should increase the amount of time that the ghosts are available from 10 seconds to 20 or 30 somewhere within that happy medium that way they can do a good amount of damage for your team because they're not lasting long enough and they're very anticlimactic otherwise this weapon would be completely use it, useful so on to the Ferox so I mentioned before that I'm using pretty much all these weapons together as a team well, what I will do is sometimes I'll either cast the the swarm on enemies, keeping them still, and I'll throw down the Xenostar, probably cast my Desiccation to make the Xenostar do more damage because it will still do that if they're blinded. But I'll, oftentimes I'll throw my Ferox into the middle of them with the secondary fire. And as we all know, the Ferox will pull them together. It magnetizes them together. And once that takes place, you can shoot down your Xenostar and start using your Ballistica to kind of make ghosts in the middle of that. So any enemies that are still stuck there getting damaged by the Xenostar will also be stuck there getting damaged by your ghosts as well. Because when you throw the Ferox, it automatically switches you to your secondary weapon. So I would I like to throw the Xenostar down, especially during uh, something like a defense mission or an excavation I'd like to throw it for objective protection and then as enemies start to pour in I'll throw down my Ferox at a crowd and then go wild with my ballistic prime as far as the primary fire goes this is gonna be pretty good but it's, it's not gonna be the best thing in the world it will experience fall off damage at a point in time so don't get too crazy don't rely on your Ferox too much Last thing that I need to cover, since, you know, the focus system is going out the window and none of that matters anyways, is the companion. Uh, I'm using the helmet charger here, but I, you could use anything. You could use a Kubro, you could use a Kavak, because the, the most important thing about this setup 
is having your link armor and your link health because with all of that present that's gonna bring your companion up to 9958 health and with the link armor it's gonna bring it up to 711 uh, this this companion has gone down less than what I have and less than what the other team has done and with trample bite uh, maul it's it's gonna be doing tremendous amounts of damage so you can't go wrong with this type of setup if you copy this mod for mod you will be satisfied I can guarantee you that much so that pretty much does it for my Enaros Reforged uh, there's nothing that I haven't covered uh, I could be changing these weapons here but all in all they they really work really really well together and they they fulfill a theme in my head I'm all about Egyptian mythology so this is my equivalent of set in Egyptian mythological deities so if you like this video and you learn something from it it always helps if you smash that like button comment Share, subscribe, do everything I always encourage you to do. And until next time, this has been Vance, signing out. Peace.